What's going on RPG gamers and Dungeon Crawl Classics fans? It's Sam with 3D6 where we roll up like it's 1974 and I'm here with a system neutral product review but before we get to that I just wanted to show you something awesome that came in the mail today and that is HP Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, a manga by Gu Tonabe. See it's uh, backwards in classic manga form. I'm really not a big manga fan but I'm intrigued by Lovecraft so I decided to pick this thing up. The artwork looks cool and I'm pretty excited to get cracked into this. But before I do that, got to do something else and that is do a review of Michael Curtis's Dungeon Alphabet published by Goodman Games. Dungeon Alphabet is an A to Z reference for classic dungeon design. This is the expanded fourth printing. It features uh, cover artwork by Errol Otis, a forward by David Zeb Cook, and illustrations by several other classic people. You can see here it is a winner of the Three Castles Award, whatever that is. On the reverse side, we've got the Dungeon Alphabet expanded fourth printing, an A to Z reference for classic dungeon design. Dungeon design is as easy as ABC. The Dungeon Alphabet compiles inspirational tables on classic dungeon design elements to assist a game master in creating subterranean challenges. This fourth printing expands the contents to 43 tables of useful material. A is for altar, B is for books, C is for caves. The Dungeon Alphabet has advice, hints, and randomized tables that bring new life to your adventures. The entries are accompanied by outstanding art from classic fantasy illustrators are in and are compatible with all fantasy role-playing games. The list price of $19.99, available at goodmangames.com and also at your favorite local game shop. So opening this thing up, first thing you're going to see is classic TSR blue illustration by Peter Mullen. This thing is awesome. They've got kind of a Lovecraftian elder thing sort of deal over here. You've got a skeletal guy. You've got your adventuring party looking around. There's a cultist behind them. There's an eye stock peeking around a corner. There's some treasure down over here and mushrooms over here. All types of good classic fantasy stuff. Going over to the table of contents, I'm not going to read every single thing that's going to be on here, but you can pause the video and look for yourself. These are all the tables that you're going to find inside the book. Anything from altars to fungi to statues to zowie. We've got a forward here by David Zeb Cook, classic game designer. You might know him from the basic, or rather the expert rules of the basic expert D&D set, also known as Moldvay Cook. We've also got book number one, the Moldvay book. We might look at those in another video. We've got our introduction by Michael Curtis, kind of giving you some inspiration for why he wrote this, how to use the supplement as well as some expanded information for stuff that they added for the fourth printing. We've got an Errol Otis uh, illustration here, the guy that also did the cover artwork. And here we're getting into our first table, and you know what? I forgot to get out my D20. So we're going to cut, I'm going to get a dice out, and we're going to get right back to this. And we got the big boy out for this one. So. First table is A is for altars, and since this happens to be a D20 table, let's just roll something. We got an 11, comes down, fired clay bricks. Studded with gemstones, 80% ornamental, 20% semi-precious. Removes, bestows, cure on a person or object. So that's just the uh, what the altar is made out of, its appearance, the accoutrements, and its special properties. Uh, there's going to be more than one entry per letter of the alphabet, which I think is awesome because if there were only, what is it, 26 letters in the alphabet, 24, I don't even know, I was an English major. But if there was only one entry per letter, then that would probably get pretty boring pretty fast. Beautiful art throughout the book. This one doesn't incorporate the art into the tables as much as the uh, predecessor of this, the Monster Alphabet by Joe Bittman does, and we'll get into that in another review. We've got a dozen unusual adventuring bands. This is one of my favorite things in here. It is a centerfold of a dungeon. If I can pull this out without crinkling it up too much. And if you read this text, this starter map is designed to get you your creative juices flowing. Use this book to fill it in. So using the tables contained within this book, you can populate your own dungeon and screw with your players. 
the old school way. On the flip side of this centerfold, we've got this awesome piece right here. I'm not sure who did this one, but it's really cool. Impalement, dismemberment, you got an idol, you've got monsters, what else could you want? After that, we've got DCC advertisement. We've got <laughs> weird Uncle Brendan LaSalle down here in the corner. I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but it's in this ad, so that's cool. B is for books. We got a 3D6 roll on that one. B is also for battles. We got a D100 for book titles. A dozen creepy crypts. D's for dragon. We got another D20 table for interesting doors. Let's roll on that. It's an eight. Small barred window set indoor. Cool. That's awesome. By the way, this one comes with a, one of those awesome little ribbon bookmarks. I love it when publishers include that because they didn't in the monster alphabet. So y'all screwed up on that. Sorry, guys. E is for entrances. G is for gold. Ten terrible guardians defending terrific treasure. They're big fans of alliteration over there at Goodman Games, and I appreciate that. Got some Cthulhu-looking statues. J is for jewels. Kobolds. L is for levers. I really like this one. It's a D30. I don't have a D30 on me, but... There were some cool things, like Nothing Happens, that's one of my favorites. There was another one, it was uh, something like your player character loses memory of the last 24 hours. It'd be really cool if you introduced an NPC right before they came into the dungeon, maybe they saved their life, they come in here, somehow get them to get the NPC to pull the lever so that they don't have to. He loses his memory, doesn't know why he's there with your party and thinks he's been kidnapped and now they have to deal with that. I'm sure your players would deserve something like that, so stuff to think about. L is for levels. We got another D20 table for dungeon levels. Magic. And maps. I really like how this one's incorporated with the text. Ooh, a 3D20 table over here. Unusual maps found in the dungeon. No stone left unturned. It does an odd omens. R is for rooms. And also relics. You've got statues. We've got another D30 table. So if you are going to buy this book, it is a good idea to have a set of the funky dice that you would use in Dungeon Crawl Classics. I'm sure you could also just roll 3d10 or something, but that's not as much fun, right? Unusual Dungeon Stairs. Another d20 table. I love this picture, but let's roll on that d20 table real quick. 17. The dungeon stairs are musical. Stepping on one or more steps causes a musical note to sound reverberating down the stairwell. Each pipe organ-like note is perfectly tuned to the deft footwork. And deft footwork can cause intricate musical compositions to be played. These musical stairs might be due to a quirk in the dungeon's design, a warning system, or a key to unlocking hidden mysteries. Perhaps when a specific tune is played, a secret door opens or a magical effect occurs. Awesome. That's a cool one. Like I said, I really love this picture here. The undead. And vermin. Getting over here to the end, and it almost feels like... I don't want to say that Michael Curtis ran out of steam here, but some of these last few... Or a little less inspired than some of the uh, beginning tables. I can understand that putting together 43 tables is probably an arduous task, but what can you say? Xenophobia. Six sinister uses for the color yellow. I mean, if you want to do that uh, king and yellow kind of deal, I'm sure that is a good way to do it. And you got your 20 random zowie things. Let's go ahead and roll a zowie. That's a six, not a nine. A crystal ziggurat that houses a giant beating heart at its center. Cool. 
more of the TSR blue over here. And now we've got our uh, book end page, another mullen, and it's got a lot of cool stuff. Guy worshiping at an altar, stuff on fire, people on fire, people trying to get treasures and potions. They're all about to meet their doom. So that's the contents of the dungeon alphabet. Super, super valuable uh, dungeon master, game master, judge, keeper, whatever you want to call yourself. This is an invaluable toolbox that you can use to populate dungeons and just create wacky, zany adventures for your adventurers to die in. You might want to compare this to something like Matt David's Book of Random Tables, but they're incomparable, where this one is literally just table after table, all D100s, lists of things. There's no real artwork, there's no real exposition, there's no real insight to help you get that feel for old school gaming. That is also a very useful toolbox for a dungeon master, but this is on a whole other level, and I commend Goodman Games for putting out a product like this. So with that, this review is done. If you liked this video, we would be so happy if you liked it, subscribed to our channel, rang the notification bell so you could be notified when we drop more videos, because we're going to be making more system neutral product reviews, more DCC reviews, more Dungeons and Dragons 5e reviews. We're basically going to review anything we can get our hands on, because we love RPGs and we want to share that with you. With that, roll up like it's 1974 with 3D6. I'm Sam, and I am out. Later.